Now, over time, what do we see? We see that unemployment fluctuates with the business cycle. Unemployment will rise during downturn of economic activity, and unemployment will go down, obviously, when the economy is expanding. And we see in this cycle of unemployment uh, that it follows a business cycle. Uh, you'll also note that it never ever goes to zero. Uh, uh, zero percent unemployment is uh, really never heard of, and we'll see why in a few minutes. Uh, but uh, unemployment rates in some countries are very low. Uh, as I said, in a lot of European countries, we're looking at 7-8% unemployment. Uh, the United States, I think it's currently around 4% or 3%. Uh, unemployment numbers lag slightly behind economic growth cycles uh, because it takes time for the economy and employment uh, to respond to expansionary and recessionary cycles. If we look at the numbers for France uh, from uh, Eurostat, we see that unemployment by gender, which is an issue we discussed last time in class, was some of the reasons why unemployment numbers are higher uh, and why wages are lower uh, for women. Uh, we've seen that unemployment gap uh, that existed between women and men has slowly decreased. We also see that in France, unemployment is much higher for people uh, that are young. Young person unemployment rates are quite high in 2019, over or just about 20% if you're less than 25 years old, and significantly less for those over 25 years old. Now, unemployment moves uh, with the economy, as I mentioned, as the economy moves through its economic cycles. And here I've mapped out for you the economic GDP cycle. So we're looking at gross domestic product. We can see the trend line here. Uh, so we have a long-term trend moving upwards for this economy. And this is the economy of France. And we can see that it moves along this trend line, moving through expansion, down into recession, moving through expansion again, going through recession. And the unemployment numbers uh, also track this, uh, and that's uh, expected. So during the period here when we have GDP falling like this, we would expect that unemployment would actually rise, and, and that corresponds to the previous graph that we saw on unemployment. Now, I guess an interesting question that one would want to know is, well, why aren't we always in equilibrium in the labor market? Unemployment exists when the demand uh, to be uh, the demand for workers or labor uh, is less than the quantity of people that want to work. But if we're in an economy, well, uh, wages should adjust and we should find equilibrium. I mean, we're studying economics. We know that supply and demand hopefully equal at some point. So maybe the question we want to know is, well, why, why aren't they equal? Why is there, uh, uh, why are there a lot of people that want to work, but there's no jobs? And that basically means the labor market's not in equilibrium. Well, how does that work? Well, one of the ways this happens is that economists say that we have what's called sticky wages. Wages do not tend to fall a lot. Wages sometimes will go up, but when we try to lower wages, well, wages don't go down. And we need wages to go down to find equilibrium. Well, there's a lot of, a lot of reasons why this can happen. Uh, I'll mention a few, and then I'm going to show you an example uh, of why wages can't go down. First off, uh, the, the union impact. Uh, workers will fight wage cuts, and we've seen this, and this is one of the impacts of unionized labor. Uh, wage cuts for maybe non-union employees or other uh, specific types of workers are seen as unfair. And so unions will fight wage cuts, and, and this reduces flexibility in the economy. Secondly, uh, well, we have a problem with adverse selection. Uh, if I lower the wages in my company, there's a good chance I may lose some really good people. And I don't want to lose good people, so I don't decrease wages for everybody. 
I just get rid of people that are not being effective. So instead of lowering wages for everybody, I selectively choose people to remove from the company, making sure to only remove those people that are not performing well. So we don't lower wages in general for everybody. We keep wages high and choose people to let go. And lastly, uh, we have what's called an insider-outsider uh, effect. Uh, we tend to, uh, if, we, if we decrease our wages, uh, then uh, our people that are already inside our company will maybe leave. And we don't want that. So uh, we've got uh, some pot potential reasons for uh, a sticky wage. Now, let me, to, let me explain this a little bit more in detail. Let's consider uh, the case where we have a supply and demand for labor in the labor market. And uh, for some reason, the economy goes into a recession. And this is happening because the demand for goods and services in the economy falls. Businesses see their orders decrease. Uh, they no longer need to produce as many goods and services. And so, obviously, the demand for labor will decrease. Now, in an economy, in a, in a very effective and efficient economy, well, we'd find a new equilibrium. And the wage rate and the number of people demanded and supplied would decrease. Wages would fall, the quantity of demand uh, would decrease, and the quantity of labor supply would decrease. Fewer people would want to work at that lower wage rate. But we've seen that wages can be sticky, and wages don't fall very quick. And so what happens? Well, we don't get to this new equilibrium, and wages stay where they are. And if wages stay where they are, well, we have a very simple problem. The problem would be that at this wage, the quantity demanded of, of labor, meaning the number of people that companies want to hire, is here. And the quantity of people that want to work, the supply of labor, is higher. So we're in a situation where we have an excess of supply. The quantity of labor that want to work to be supplied is greater than the quantity of labor demanded by companies. We are not in an equilibrium. Uh, we have an excess quantity supplied at that wage rate, and we get unemployment. This is where unemployment exists and why we don't find uh, equilibrium. Now, in the long run, uh, if we see that unemployment exists through business cycles, economies are expanding and, and retracting, uh, and we see this movement of labor demand back and forth, uh, and we see sticky wages, well, this is what's called cyclical unemployment. The economy is moving through business cycles, and we associate unemployment with these changes of GDP as cyclical unemployment. But in the long run, we shouldn't be in a business cycle. We should be on a trend line. We should be moving upwards. Our, our real GDP should be expanding. So why does unemployment persist in the long run? Why do we see unemployment persisting and persisting no matter what uh, over time, even when we're not in a recession? Why does it exist? Well, part of that comes from what's called frictional unemployment. And this is because people are moving between jobs. There's friction. It's not a perfectly fluid labor market. If I decide I want to change jobs, I'll probably look for a job. It'll take me time. I'll leave my job. I may have to move to another city, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And so changing jobs can take time. And over this time, as I'm changing jobs, I'm going to be unemployed. And so I'm considered frictionally unemployed. The second reason is because the labor market 
and the people that want to work may not correspond with the people that we want to hire. So at a given wage, the demand for labor may be high. Companies may want to hire a lot of people. This is the case today, for example, of uh, computer scientists. But there's not enough people. And so the demand is out there. We'd like that to be there. But suddenly we don't have people that can match the skills. So people are looking for jobs, but companies are only hiring, let's say, computer scientists. These people are structurally unemployed, and that will persist for a long time. We've seen this happen in the European economy. We've seen companies trying to hire computer scientists and not succeeding, and it persists. And the only way that will be solved is, is if we see more and more people getting trained or retrained in computer science. So this is a structural problem with the economy. For some reason, we don't produce enough computer scientists. Why doesn't the labor market or why doesn't the education market produce more computer scientists? This is a good question. What's happening? Why does this persist? Full employment GDP is the rate of employment or the associated rate of unemployment when the economy is cruising along on its trend line and everything's happy. We have no cyclical unemployment. Uh, at full employment GDP, the, the economy is operating at its max. Now, sometimes we'd like to push the economy beyond its max. Unemployment can decrease even further. We can make the machine go faster and faster and make people work longer hours and and, and try to reduce uh, unemployment and, uh, as much as we can. And typically, typically what happens when this, when this occurs is that we're going way beyond full employment. We're pushing the economy too far. Uh, and because we push the economy too far, we tend to generate inflation. To measure full employment GDP, then, we use what's called NERU. And NERU is non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment. Uh, we call this because of what I just mentioned. If we're at full employment, we're not pushing the economy too fast, and we're not pushing inflation. If, however, we go above this level of GDP, if we try to push the economy, uh, and if inflation rate uh, goes higher, we're we're going too fast and unemployment will fall, but inflation will be the result. And we don't really like that either. The natural rate estimates across OECD countries, you can see it right here. Uh, we see that Spain and, and Greece are leading the way with uh, high natural rates of unemployment. This is the rate of unemployment that we would expect when the economy is at full employment meaning the economy is doing pretty well. Uh, and if uh, these people are unemployed, it's because we have a problem with structural unemployment and frictional unemployment, but primarily structural unemployment. Uh, we have a significant problem in these countries because even if we're not in recession, we would still see in Spain maybe 20% unemployment. And you can see here for France, let me bring it out here, France, the, un the structural unemployment rate would be almost 10%. This is telling us that, yeah, we can push the economy of France further. We can expand demand, but people will still be unemployed. And that's a problem. How can we impact the natural rates? How can we lower the natural rate of unemployment? Well, we can facilitate job search. We can decrease frictional unemployment and we make it easier for people to find a job. Uh, we can retrain uh, people. Older people are affected obviously more by structural unemployment. They've been trained years ago. Maybe they haven't updated their skills. As the economy changes, they find themselves losing their jobs. They haven't updated their skills. Retraining 
the elderly retraining people that still want to work uh, is a way around that. Uh, it takes time, it takes effort, it takes money, uh, and it can be pretty tough to do. We can impact the natural rate through policies that support unemployed uh, to uh, find a job. But this may stimulate structural unemployment. We have a hard time. We can get people to find jobs quicker, potentially, uh, uh, but we have to be careful. Uh, and policies to support the unemployed, uh, like we've seen, uh, maybe what we call a safety net, uh, where we're giving people money uh, if they can't find a job over a long period of time. Well, we may have a situation of adverse selection where people will choose to not look very hard for a job. And this is policies that are supporting unemployment may lead to structural unemployment. Uh, difficulties to lay people off. Obviously, we have labor market rigidities. Uh, if I can't fire someone easily, when the economy starts to expand, I won't hire people. Uh, so uh, this is a rigidity in the market. Productivity and technologies. Uh, we can improve labor productivity. We can add technology, increasing the demand for labor in general. These are technological shifts that happen in economies. Uh, now, obviously, it can go the other way as well, uh, with uh, robots and whatnot for certain types of workers. Training, as I've mentioned. Uh, and this is a quote in February 2018 from Reuters. We can see that the unemployment rate uh, dipped below 9% for the first time in 2009. Um, since 2009, I'm not uh, and the reason why, however, uh, we're concerned, we're concerned that, in fact, as it says, the country may already be reaching the limits of what economists call its structural unemployment rate, could be around 9%. And that is a major concern for the French economy. Uh, today, we have a problem with what we see here, skills mismatch. Lastly, uh, when we talk about unemployment, we're talking about potential benefits. And I said that safety net systems that exist help people that can't be uh, employed for some reason. Now, uh, unemployment insurance is paid. When you work, you contribute to unemployment insurance. So it's normal that during periods when you're not working, you benefit from that system. Uh, in France today, we have various unemployment benefits that exist for people that cannot find jobs. This is a safety net system in case you can't find a job. ARE is Allocation d'aide au retour à l'emploi. This is typical unemployment insurance. It's available under certain conditions uh, and it's also available even if you quit your job uh, unilaterally uh, uh, to follow your spouse, for example. Uh, this is typically available for an unemployed person over a fixed period of time, uh, and it depends on how long you've contributed to unemployment insurance. We have the ASS, uh, which is uh, also a sum of money for some people that they no longer have access to ARE, and uh, there are conditions to receive that, but as you can see, the amount of money uh, that an individual receives per month is not a significant sum. Uh, also, to access this amount of money, you cannot be having, uh, or you can have other resources, but they're limited. So if you're earning interest income or, or income from other sources, uh, there's a max. And if you go beyond the max, well, you can't earn ASS. And lastly, uh, RSA. Uh, this is kind of like the, the last stop. Uh, I'm not getting income from other sources. I don't have a job. I no longer have the ARE unemployment insurance, uh, I can access the RSA. So there we have it. We've gone through what is unemployment, how is it measured. We've looked at the what unemployment rates exist, structural unemployment, frictional unemployment, uh, structural, uh, cyclical, frictional, all of them are important. We've looked at safety nets. Uh, we've looked at sticky wages. We've covered 
the criteria and the main elements of what is unemployment. If you have any questions, please send them to me by mail. Uh, and please take a look at the question to be solved below this video. Uh, and don't hesitate to read the text uh, on the chapter of unemployment. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned a little bit about what is unemployment, how do we measure it, where does it come from. Uh, and again, if you have any questions, please send them along. Wish you all the best and see you next time.